Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. On today's video, we're going to talk about a fragrance from the House of Chanel. The one that I have here today is number 19 and we will get into the reason why this fragrance is so special to me, why I absolutely adore it. And it's probably one of, if not my favorite fragrance from the House of Chanel. that we have here today is the eau de toilette it's number 19 the eau de toilette but not the eau de parfum they make the eau de parfum they make a pure parfum they also make poudre in eau de parfum which is a flanker of number 19 but this one itself is the eau de toilette now just so you do know i have the old packaging so this one still sprays on its side you have to press this little clicky thing up here and then you get your juice that kind of comes out of this little hole here uh, the new one is different. They've changed it into the bottle that's just like Coco Mademoiselle where you lift this up. You can take the whole lid off and then it has a sprayer inside. If you go on Chanel's website, it is listed as new. So I believe they changed a couple of the notes just to follow regulations because some of the notes are no longer able to be used in perfumery. That happens quite frequently. They reformulate things to kind of keep them up to date to what is available, what they can use in fragrance and all that good stuff. So this one was launched in 1971. So the reason I'm a little hesitant to say that's because the fragrance was originally launched to commemorate Coco Chanel's actual birthday, which is August 19th. And every source that I read said that the fragrance was launched in 1971, but there's some sources that say that it was launched in August 19th of 1970. So before Coco's passing, because Chanel did pass away January 10th of 1971. So if it was launched in August of that year, then it would have been launched after her passing. But if it was launched the year before, it would have been launched before her passing. So it's a little hard, you know, there's a bunch of different sources. One says it's 1971, the other one says it's 1970. So if you know the actual history, let me know down in the comments. I would be very, very much thankful because I do love this fragrance very much. But this is the Eau de Toilette variant and all of them are listed as launching in 1971, except for Poudre. Poudre was launched in 2001, which is the more powdery version of this fragrance. And if you're looking at the bottle, it is a green liquid inside. So. It's a very simplistic bottle. It's not my favorite. I'm going to be very honest and frank with you and very forward. I'm not a big fan of Chanel packaging. Uh, even when I worked for them, I thought that they got away with murder. The most cheap, ugly, plasticky things would be put on Chanel. And because it has these beautiful CCs up top, everyone would be like, oh, it's timeless. It's classic. It's Chanel. And while I agree with that, they are very simplistic. They are very forward thinking. They're very ahead of their time when it comes to packaging. They're very simplistic at the same time it kind of can come off as lazy so this top part here is plastic as you can see it has a little hole in the front again this is the old packaging so your new one if you're getting a new one of these will not look the same if you buy it from chanel and then you have a number 19 at the front there you have a little logo here that says chanel paris mine is a tester because i worked for chanel and they gave it to me for free so i didn't buy this one i bought poudre i didn't buy this one though you do get your cc's up top and then in the back you can kind of see where this is able to be pressed so you can spray it i'm not going to spray it because i'll spray my face but the fragrance itself whew, if you like green scents then you'll like this one let me just say it is probably one of my favorite scents when it comes to green scents because it's done so well and all of them are done very well the eau de toilette is a very light weight version of the other ones it doesn't change in character though Unlike a lot of other fragrances where they kind of change in character when it comes from the Eau de Parfum, the Eau de Toilette, the Pure Parfum, these do kind of change a little bit. They just kind of get a little bit more intense. Some notes are going to be a little bit more in your face or they're going to be a little bit more deep. Uh, and this one itself, the fragrance notes for the most part are almost identical to the Eau de Parfum. Now, I like this one more because it's a little bit more modern, if that makes any sense. So you can wear this one and it will be lightweight going to be a little bit more versatile because of that reason as well so because of that i really really like this fragrance now let's get into the notes really quickly the perfumer for this fragrance is henry robert like i said launched in 1971 or 1970 who knows and the actual fragrance is 145 dollars for 100 mils this is the only size that this fragrance is available in at least here in the u.s it might be different in europe because i know 
a lot of fragrances that are axed here are still available in Europe for Chanel and that goes for the sizes as well so if they have smaller sizes over there let me know also down in the comments because we seem to not get anything in the U.S. I mean we get everything that's popular and then if it doesn't sell like they want it to they ax it they cut it they reformulate it to try to you know make it a little bit better but if it doesn't sell even then 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 they completely get rid of it which is the case with the body care line for this fragrance they used to have the most beautiful powder and the most beautiful luxurious cream and if you like this scent you could get those you could kind of get by with those actual body products because they just work so well so at the top with this fragrance we're going to get bergamot neroli hyacinth as well as gaptimum so we get a mixture of florals up top with a nice zesty bergamot note the bergamot in here is not going to be like a calabrian bergamot uh, it's going to be just a very nice zesty fruit up top it sparkles when you first spray it and it goes right together with that galdemum the hyacinth is also there it's a very peculiar note in this fragrance because it, it kind of comes up and dances in your face and then it kind of says i'm going home early <laughs> the same thing with the neroli the neroli is in here as well but it's a very nice neroli it's not a neroli that's going to be for example a windex neroli or a febreze neroli it's very peculiar very different very elevated and very expensive neroli up top here then we get into the heart notes which are going to be rose jasmine and musk we also get iris in this so obviously with it being a green scent the iris in here is going to be in my opinion the star of the show because it is a powdery scent i know that they have pudra but the actual number 19 collection all of it is already very powdery because of that very beautiful iris that's in this fragrance you get a rose in here which is kind of lost in the actual translation of the actual fragrance itself the jasmine is there it's kind of flirty but it's very timid it's very quiet you also get lily of valley narcissus and a long long in this fragrance the long long is another one that kind of comes out and flirts a little bit the narcissus is another one that is kind of lost in this fragrance for me at least the Lily of the Valley is in here. It's a 1970s fragrance, so I think that was a very common note for that time frame. Uh, and it kind of comes out. It doesn't date the fragrance per se, but it does come out and it says, I'm here. And it works really well with the iris overall. I feel like those two notes typically are paired together and they really do a good job together. Uh, they kind of have an old school type of vibe without being grandma or without being old. In the base, we're going to get oak moss, cedarwood, leather, as well as sandalwood. And I'm sorry, I said musk was in the heart notes. It's actually a base note in here. The musk is very musky in this fragrance. And that oak moss, that's another star of the show here. I feel like in the 70s, Chanel did oak moss like no one else did. They did a terrific job with it. It really just worked together with the entire fragrance collection. And it just made the fragrance a little bit more elevated, but with that very sensual, effortless type of French way. This is a very effortless fragrance overall, in my opinion. It's one of those that you can spray on. You know the person is very luxurious. You know they're very effortless, but they just have the sophistication to them. And I like this fragrance for that reason. It's very understated. It's what you would call maybe old money aesthetic. It's one of those people that is going to really captivate the room but it's not trying to call for attention the person that wears this fragrance is not wearing a ton of labels they just have your attention because they are dressed well they're well polished and they carry themselves well and i think that this fragrance really 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 does captivate all of that in a scent inside of a bottle it is one of my favorites i know it's probably not a lot of people's favorites because it is green it can be a little powdery it has a 1970s vibe to it which to some people is just going to be a no-go but to me, it's one of those fragrances that definitely doesn't get enough attention. It's very sad to see that it's not loved as much as I love it because it's one of those fragrances that is just so captivating, so different. And if you wear this in the springtime, you know, in that time period when it's spring and we're converting from winter to spring and it's kind of cool, it's definitely a perfect fragrance for that. It's also a perfect fragrance for the fall season. I would say you could probably get by with wearing this in the summertime as well. Um, but I would definitely go for the Eau de Parfum in that case because you're going to get better longevity out of that one than this one. But to me, this one's a easy way to get into the Chanel number no. 19 collection because I wrote down the prices. I'm not sure. Let me know down in the comments if Chanel had another price increase. I think they did, but I'm not sure again. Their Eau de Parfums in number no. 19. So number no. 19, the Eau de Parfum and Poudre, the Eau de Parfum, which I believe Poudre does come in two sizes here in the States at least. 
But number 19, Eau de Parfum, only comes in one size, which is going to be 100 mils or 3.4 fluid ounces. They are charging you 172. Last time I looked, it was 160, 165, something like that. So again, I'm not sure what Chanel is smoking out there or what they're drinking because they're pricing themselves out of the market. Now, I get that there's brands like Tom Ford that have done this. But I think Tom Ford's very gimmicky, and I think that that is not sustainable, and they will at some point have to reduce prices. Chanel is trying to get into that territory, and because they're getting into that territory, it's, it's a very slippery slope. You're going to start losing clients. You're going to start losing sales because people can't afford it. And because of that, as a result of not being able to afford it, a brand can lose popularity as well. And I think that brands really need to get that in their head. We're not in a very good economical time currently. And, you know, raising your prices to this point can be a little dangerous. And it's kind of in poor taste, if you ask me. But I'm just here to review perfume. So no one's asking me anything about that. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think of number 19, the Eau de Toilette. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you prefer Poudre? Do you prefer the Parfum? Or do you prefer the Eau de Parfum? By the way, if you want to know the price of the Parfum, which is going to be 0.5 fluid ounces, is 305 US dollars, which is not bad for a Parfum because Parfums are typically very expensive, but even for a Parfum, it's still a little expensive. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Do you agree with me? Do you hate this fragrance? Do you love it? Which one of the Chanel number no. 19s is your favorite? Let me know all of that down below. Also, make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing for more fragrance-related content. And I hope to see you guys, maybe, maybe, on the next video. Until then, take care.